Doodle bud. Today we're looking at this lovely Peniter pen that comes in this box. It looks like a little writing box. This is the Modern Times, also known as Tompi Moderni. Sent to me by the kind folks over there at Pen Chalet to review. They want to get my thoughts on this pen. FYI, next time you're checking out Pen Chalet, use Doodlebud10 to save you 10%. Now, I was quite interested in this new pen from Peniter because it has this triangular type of section to it and design to it, which reminds me a little bit of my recently acquired Grail pen here, my Omos 360. So I'll show you a quick little comparison. There are quite a few differences, but... There's not many pens that adopt this type of shape, and the New Modern Times does that. I've been using it for a couple of weeks now, a week and a half for sure, I think closer to two weeks actually. My number one concern on a pen like this is nib dry out, because we've got some magnets down here, we have some magnets up here, and it closes like so, and magnetic cap closing pens are notorious for nib dry out. I'm happy to report, no dry out. For you see, there is a little black O-ring right there behind the nib housing. And what that O-ring does is it seals up against inside of the bore there in the cap and actually provides the seal to it. So that was the, my biggest worry on a pen like this. My Omas 360 isn't exactly perfect for dry out. It does dry out uh, quicker than most of my other pens. So that's the only thing I don't like about it. But yeah, two weeks. I left it for over a week, I think a week and a half, without uh, using the pen just to cap it and let it go and do its seal thing, because that was really important to me on this pen, and it passed it with flying colors. There are a few little things on here that uh, makes me feel was potentially a bit rushed. I'll explain that in a moment, but let's get to it. I'll run you through the pen, tell you all about it. So let's jump into it now. So the clip here on the pen is the classic Peniter spring clip, which has done quite well. You can actually, if you can get a little lighting down there, there's a little spring. You got your pivot points on here and on the cam that they have in the design, it stops it from, uh, you know, over overextending and potentially damaging the clip. So that's done quite well. As you can see, we have a cap band. This one is black. There's some few different trims, I think, like gold, rose gold, all that type of stuff. We have the Tompe Moderni and Peniter made in Italy down there. A little button on top and at the back of the pen. We have this little knob here with a little bit of touch of knurling. The fit is quite nice, feels nice in the hand. That is the filling mechanism. So in the little booklet that comes with the pen on the site, it says it's a piston filler. It is, that is true, it's a piston, but it's the piston inside of a of a converter. So it is a captive converter inside of the pen. So this is as far as you're going to go with disassembling the pen. Sorry, I should say you can you can take the nib unit, like the whole housing and everything else, out that unscrews, or you can pull the nib and feet out of there, but you're not going to be getting into the internal bits of the pen. So you just put it down in your ink, turny turny, and you get your ink up into the pen. The only downside with that, it is a fairly interesting profile as you can see here. Um, this might be a bit of a challenge with certain bottle designs, especially more narrow ones getting in there. So just keep that in mind. Or if you have your favorite ink and only a little bit left, uh, I guess you can do a little wizardry here and get a syringe and fit it in the little breather hole and fill it that way. But that's a little bit tricky. Or you could pop the whole nib housing out and fill it in that way as well. But a little more cumbersome for uh, that type of stuff. But normal operation filling the pen, you don't have any problems. So you can see a very interesting profile. Um, it's made by the one and only Dante Del Vecchio over there, Peniter. Lots of pen designs have his name attached to it. And he was pursuing uh, like the most comfortable pen. Now, I, I like triangular grips. I have no problem with it. Hence, my love for the Omas 360. Extremely comfortable for me. The person I got this from, they got the pen, gripped it up, and just said right away, not for me. I am curious for folks that don't like those types of grips if they would like something like this. Um, you know, it's I have no problems with it. There definitely will be people out there that don't like this grip. Maybe a smaller hand would be a little trickier with it. It is quite a, a large flat along the bottom here of the profile, so that might not fit everyone. I did try rotating the pen a little bit, and I actually found when it's like this, okay, so more of the pure triangular shape, my personal taste, that's even more comfortable, but I got nothing against that as well. One little detail I noticed. We have the flat here, and you can see it looks like the nib is just off a bit as far as alignment. So 12 o'clock is here, and the nib is aligned to like 11.58, maybe 11.59. I would say more like 11.58. So it's just off a touch. 
Now, of course, that does not affect the uh, performance of the pen whatsoever, and you don't notice it when you're writing, but uh, I always notice those tiny little things. So yeah, that's just off a little hair, and that just has to do with this O-ring being here. So um, yeah, maybe a slight, slight adjustment in where the thread is starting or whatever, but yeah, you can just see it's off just a teeny little bit. The capping mechanism is quite nice. There's a lot of the mechanisms I've I found with the magnetic, it's, it's a little bit loud, a little more clunky. This one is quite smooth, almost silent, like very, very soft. Uh, you could feel the O-ring here provides just a touch of a cushion. So yeah, it's, it's a much softer feel for a magnetic cap. Usually magnetic caps, there's a slam, sort of a, a chunk type of feel to it, usually because it's metal on metal. You don't have that same feeling on this one. So that is quite a pleasurable capping uh, on this pen and it seals, which is nice. It posts. It looks a little funny posted, and it's quite huge. So, you know, I have a big hand. Uh, you don't need to post the pen. It's plenty long as it is. But if you are a must poster, well, you'll be happy it's on there, and it's quite secure as well. The pen is very comfortable in the hand, and the weight feels very appropriate for the pen as well. The balance is good. So we've got about 35 and a quarter. That is with ink inside the pen and pop off the cap, you're left of 26.4. Now, for folks who don't like a pen without a clip because they can roll all the time, uh, some people are just no-go unless it has a clip. Well, then you might like pens that do have a clip. Here's a classic one, the Mont Blanc 149. But guess what? You don't write with the cap on. You do it with the cap off. If you set it down, it can roll away as well. So that is one nice thing with the triangular shape, especially this one. You just set it down flat on the desk. It's just boom. So if that's something you like, it's just there, ready to go. It's not going to go anywhere on you, much like the 360. This actually has a little bit of a wobble to it because of the shape. Uh, this one sits a little bit more flat. So that is actually quite nice. You just set it down wherever you are, even on a slope desk, put it down, cap on, cap off. It's not going to get away on you. I'm going to get you some proper lighting. There we go. So you can see it's a little tricky with the black, but we've got Paniter here, Paniter there. Nice little logo action and M, which is the point size on this one, which is medium. And I believe from the shape of the feed and the nib all together, this is a Bach made nib. For size comparison, I have a few different pens. First, we got some Italian ones. So we have my Omas 360, a Leonardo Mosaico, then my Visconti Homo Sapiens Bronze Age. That's the maxi, the full size. A couple German pens, Pelican M805 and a Mont Blanc 149. So if you like big pens, this is a big pen. Here we are caps off, and like I said, huge advantage to the 360 and the modern times when it comes to setting up shots like this. They don't roll anywhere. So it's a very interesting new shape in a pen. I haven't seen one quite like this before. I like it. It's quite comfortable. Nice capping mechanism. It does seal. Let's show you how this thing writes. To do the writing sample, we need some ink. So I'm inking it up with this stuff here. This is a new ink to me. This is octopus. Well, octopus fluids. Um, this is their blue koi. Now I saw this when I was over in Victoria. There's a shop there called The Papery. And I've never heard of this before. It's a German made ink. There's some information there. You can check them out as well. And they had quite a few colors. Didn't know what to choose. So I always go for blue. This looked quite nice. And I like the picture of the koi fish on there. So let's uh, show you what it's like. So you can see here it writes like a standard medium nib. The writing experience is quite smooth, but the thing I notice it is a little bit on the dry side. So I wrote fairly smooth, but on some of the faster strokes, it would skip a little bit. Let's do some fast strokes and I'll show you. Now the paper I'm using here for this part of the review is Muji paper. And in general, I find that Muji paper is a little bit more absorbent. So I'm not having the skipping so much on this one. Uh, I find I really, really, really have to push it to get little skips. And, you know, you don't really write this fast in general. That was me lifting off. But you see the odd little one, you just it just misses a touch. But if you go into Rhodia, it's a little bit of a different story. So here we are now, same pen, different paper. And we get some more skipping. Still not terrible, and you have to go pretty fast. But, you know, let's say you're doing a signature here. Mostly when you do your signatures, I'm trying to focus here. Um, you write it fairly fast. Now, if you write slow and you have a fairly slow signature, no problem. But if you write it fast, like most folks, it's going to skip a bit. 
So just a missing a little bit on some of those spots. Now, I sort of blame that on this coating here on the nib. Oh, the focus is out. There we go. Um, so this is like a black lacquer that gets put onto the nib. I have other Bach nibs that have that same finish on there, and I do find they typically do write a touch dry. I believe it's just that coating sort of closes up that gap a little bit and inhibits ink flow a touch. Now, that's a very easy fix. I'm going to pull the nib and show you how to do it. it it's going to take me about 30 seconds to do. But that being said, this isn't a cheap pen. I'll put all the information in the description there. You can click the link and check out for yourself and exchange rates, all that stuff takes place. But I recently reviewed this pen the other day. This is a South Korean pen, Eureka. And for 50 bucks, every single nib, and then you have a Bach nib as well, actually gets tuned and adjusted. I just washed out the pen and I am happy to report that this stuff was very, very easy to clean out. Maybe uh, five or six turns in the knob here with water and all the ink came out, no problem. So you can take out the nib uh, and feed in one of two ways. You can just grab, hold, top and bottom. Get you a touch closer here. There we go. Just rotate. Took a little bit just to get it started. And it just screws out of there as well. And so what uh, I might do actually is swap out a gold Bach nib I have in this Enso uh, Italia pen there. And you can see in here we have a brass sleeve. And there is your piston dealy down there. So you could actually fill it up this way. You would just have the piston all the way pulled back like you just filled it up. And you could fill it in that way and then screw in the nib unit there. A little cumbersome, but uh, if you really want to do it, you can do it that way. But let's pop out the nib and feed. Just give it a little wiggle. It comes out pretty easy. Let me just uh, Let me just wipe this up. And a quick reminder, don't lose that O-ring. It's mega important for the pen. So here's a quick little look at the nib actually here let's get this tissue so you can see now we do have a gap but then you can see it narrows pretty much at the end there now that is one thing with these nibs you can see the uh, it starts off as a regular stainless steel nib black coating is applied i have this in other nibs just like this um, but yeah sometimes the coating can get in there and it just sort of block blocks the gap a bit so i'm going to take the feeler gauge put it in there we're going to check it felt a little tight i checked it once already um, see if maybe run it through a few times will open it up but uh, if that's not the case it's really just a matter of taking the shoulders and uh, pulling them apart a little bit I have tons of videos on this but it's like a 30 second tune up and uh, we'll get rid of that little skipping at faster writing now when I feel other uh, nibs I feel how that shim comes out the end of the tip and I can feel it's quite quite snug so it, it feels tight uh, a little too tight compared to normal now this Shim, um, according to Josh Lax, he does about half of this, 0 0.02 millimeters. Um, but you can sort of get a feel for it when, uh, you know, this is very, very tight. Yeah, and so what I'm going to do now is just open the, the tines up a little bit. Now, I did first check. You're always going to check to make sure that the nib is aligned on the feed. The slit here is aligned on the slit here. The nib is pressed in all the way. You know, make sure there's no clogs in the pen. Flush it out. I've done all that stuff already. Uh, the tines are all nicely adjusted. Everything's great. It's just that gap is too tight. So I'm just going to grab it on the shoulders and just pull apart a little bit. I don't know if we can catch it. Yeah, tough to see, but I'm just, oh, you can see a little bit there. So I'm just going to pull it apart a little bit, hold it for maybe five, ten seconds, and then give it another feel, check it, and just do this a couple times. Thought I would just break out the microscope to give you a close up of the nib here. So you can see the black coating on there. And I don't know if that's some of the ink that sort of got gooed in there or just what happens with the coating, but you can see that gap starts to sort of uh, close up on you. And then you can see the tipping there. You can see the silver. So it does get kind of smoothed out to remove because otherwise there's uh, you'll have paint essentially on the very tip where you're uh, where you're writing. But you can see that gap there. It's just too tight. And I think the main reason why is the uh, the paint gets in there. So what I actually did for this nib here was really just run the feeler gauges up and down. I went up to a larger size, like two and a half and then three thousandths of an inch. I'm trying to get your focus. There we go. Now we have just that little gap that we're looking for to help with the ink flow. We just sort of clean that up there a little bit. So now the channel, um, the sorry, I should say the slit there is just going to help. It still has that taper. So we're wider here at the very start, and then it just gradually tapers down. At the end, we got some goo there. Um, but yeah, we just need a little bit of a larger opening there at the end.
But now the process is quite simple. What I did is I just checked it under the loop really quick just for the tines because sometimes doing that, making those adjustments, they can get slightly out of tune. I just get them pretty close because at the end of the day, we do have to fit the nib and feed back together into the pen. And, you know, once you fit them back here into the housing and into the pen, they can move just ever so slightly. So I get them pretty darn close, like perfect essentially, but I will finally check it once it's fully inserted to the pen. Here goes the O-ring, slip that over top. Don't go over the edge there. And we just screw it down into the pen. And yes, you can add a touch of silicone grease onto those threads just to be safe. But here we'll do, I'll just quickly check to make sure the feed there and the and the nib are lined up and the tines are really perfect. Here we are taking a look. So yeah, alignment is pretty darn good. Nothing left to do but ink up the pen. Whoops, that came off fast. And of course it got me with a little ink as usual. Just put it in, turn your knob. Let's show you how you fill it up. So on a bottle like this, no problem. A couple turns here. All right, let me uh, let me wipe this up. So we go back to the original smear test. Again, this is not scientific. We'll give it the same thing. You can see it's wetter already. And yeah, that's just a little bit better, a little more spot on that we should have on, especially something like a medium nib, just a little bit more flow, a little richer uh, color. Now that it's writing properly, I just thought I'd show you, uh, as I mentioned earlier in the video, if you do have a different Bach nib unit that you thought you would uh, like to try in the pen, you have a favorite nib somewhere else, that's the cool thing. Everything's compatible. Just unscrew it here. It's going to bleed because I just filled this thing up and I still have ink in it. You will want to steal the O-ring off of this. We'll slip it on to this other Bach housing that I have with the nib here. Slip that on there. Back into the pen. There we go. We'll just prime the pump here just a touch and see how that goes. We just upgraded this to a uh, 14K Bach nib and now it's a fine point. Now the final detail I'll go through because earlier in the video I said it feels like it's a touch rushed. So the things I, I pointed out that were off a of hair, oh I got ink everywhere because I swapped the nibs, I didn't wipe off the, uh, the cap here. Anyways, uh, you know, the nib being off just a touch, not quite at 12 o'clock, mm -hmm. again, does not impact how the pen performs. Would have been nice if the nib was tuned a little bit better. I chalk that up to this coating now. The nib does have different, uh, sorry, the pen has different colors. This is, I think it's the French racing blue, something like that. I'll put it on the bottom here to correct myself. Um, so that, but this one has this type of treatment. Other ones have different colored nibs. I never have issue with Bach nibs. The only times I have ones that run dry is because of this paint coating on here, like I showed you. The last little thing, it has to do with the cap here. And by the way, you know it's a proper review when your fingers are covered in ink by the end of it. But let's have a look. We have the main body of the cap, and then we have the cap band here, as you can see. And then it looks like it's two-piece. So you have the main body, cap band will go on, and then this slug here will go in. Most likely a little bit of glue will be in there to hold everything together. No problem there. But if I draw your attention to the corners here, and here, now we have a black background, let me move that, maybe that will help, there we go, you can see here and here, it is off just a touch, the bend is off, now this metal is quite thick, if we compare it to say my Omas 360 over here, whoops, sorry about the bump, um, you can see the band material on there is very, very, very thin, now having it thin can also make it a little bit more frail, so I got nothing against that, but that's what I mean where it, maybe it's just a touch rushed where this profile could have been just tweaked a little bit more i don't know how they form this if there's a die or just how the bends are done um, but it seems like it could just use a touch more refinement to fit over and just made up so that's a little bit more seamless now the main reason i bring up all those little details just has to do with the price it's not a cheap pen full retail is 368 pen chalet has it on for 294 doodle bud 10 saves another 10 percent so that's what 265 something like that so of course, you can get uh, gold nib pens for that price. Absolutely, you can. Uh, but this, you know, a lot of work went into this. Unique design, unique shape, unique capping mechanism, uh, how the filling's done. So there's a lot of unique stuff on here, which I really like. I like innovation and trying new things, new designs, just, you know, always trying something new. There are a lot of, you know, cigar-shaped pens out there 
we got lots of those. So I really do like how uh, this pen was executed. It is super comfortable, all that stuff as well. But, you know, a little more refinement and just alignment with things like that, you know, tuning of the nib, it being perfectly aligned, all those little tiny details would be nice. Now, it could also be my pen is a one-off. It could be, you know, all the other ones, that cap band, that little offness there doesn't happen on other ones then everything is lined up the nib was absolutely tuned perfectly out of the box you know i can't say for sure i have a sample size of one so maybe check some other reviews other articles stuff like that to see if any of the other founding findings that i found were were brought up if not this could also just be a little bit of a one-off thanks again goes out to the kind folks at pen chalet for providing me this lovely pen Nighter modern times for review I do enjoy how it shares a little bit of the styling from the OMAS 360. You can see still quite different. The overall profile here on the sides, very different, a lot more rounded. We got the pronounced sort of flat spot here on the bottom as well. I was curious about the grip. I do enjoy it. Was very curious about the capping mechanism and the ceiling. Happy to report uh, no nib dry up issues whatsoever. That was a big one for me. So job well done there. Like I said, a couple little tidbits, little nitpicks, I should say those can get resolved i think that'd be just absolutely fantastic hit subscribe if you haven't love to chat with you down there thumbs up you know the deal we'll catch you next time <laughs>